taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. As always, if you are enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That would be really, really nice. Helps out the channel and all that jazz. Thought we'd start today on Brendan Milnes, the other of the three sort of excellent prospects that came through our academy last year. We've also got a youth preview for you. It's, it's not as good as last year, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. Um, thought we'd have a look at him as well. Doing a decent job for our underage sides. Three goals, eight assists so far this year. Solid as a rock, basically. That technique, work rate, flair. There's so many things I like about this guy. Uh, physicals aren't there yet, but he is only 17. And the key thing is, his progression is going nicely. He's slowly, he's just doing a good job. And you'll notice Regan Booty now, back to four and a half stars again. The guys are brilliant. And it also now says he's a decent Premier League player. That is incredible. Uh, I think, genuinely, I think it's got to the point where Regan Booty's actual form has elevated his ability to a point where he's playing well above himself now. And I think that's just where it's gone because he is going to be clearly the top assister in the league this year. And it is really, really great. And I hopefully think that will lead us to promotion. But the reason we're doing two live comps today against Fulham and Forest is because things are getting a little bit dicey at the moment. And it's a frustrating time to be... It's a frustrating time. My girlfriend doesn't watch the videos, but she sings along with the Hold Your Gun Capybara every episode. Well, I mean, who doesn't at this point? Luke McGee out. Scout Balcom. This was directly below each other. And honestly, um, McGee as yeah, <laughs> we've got to look for another goalkeeper. But it's really, really difficult with the limited amount of money we're working with because I just can't seem to find anyone decent. My scouts, I've got them out on short-term assignments and they just keep bringing me crap. Um, so that's unfortunate. So we might end up with McGee until the end of the season. And I honestly believe that that might well be the reason we don't go up, in all honesty. Nico Williams is highly injury-prone. You might need some cover. Yeah, isn't he just? Um, there's injury prone and then there's Nico Williams, which is quite literally get an injury, come back, immediately get an injury again. Like no gaps, just the moment he's back, injured again. How does he actually walk around is my question. Sean Dyche goes to see Ron Coates. Dyche, I like that Ron Coates lad. I'll make a bid for him later. Forget. Next week. Dyche, I'm going to go check out that Ron Coates lad. Yeah, it does seem a bit like that. He's been watching him again and Ego Hermanson too. Other manager. I really like the look of those Notts County players. I think I'll put in a bid. SYC shows up wearing an outfit of literally the most famous robber and thief in the history of the country. Other managers. Never mind. Damn right. I'm scaring them off. Epic hat. It's back. Now, in my head, I had I heard that to the tune of Backstreet's Back All Right. So hopefully that was intentional. Right. We must move on. We've had a lot of games off camera. Two live comms. Let's go. So in an annoying twist of fate that no one could have definitely not foreseen coming, uh, we drew 0-0 at home to Millwall in the next match. Uh, after that poor one against Derby. I mean, Millwall didn't really do anything, but... We just couldn't put the ball in the bastard net, and that is just one of those things. Now, to be fair, we got back to winning ways with a 4-0 trashing of Blackburn. Alex Ironton's own goal early gave us the lead, and in the second half, well, actually at the start of the end of the first half, Ron Coates comes on, scores another one. No surprises there. In the second half, he then gets another one, uh, another brace for Ron Coates. The guy is genuinely really good this year, and then Dara O'Shea got us a late one as we had to move some stuff around. Booty was, of course, excellent, but the fact that Ron Coates has scored yet another pair of goals, he's just brilliant. He still misses, he still has bad games, but he's definitely a lot better than last year. And then we went and won a beautiful game. This was, I mean, you look at the number of shots Southampton had. Most of those were from range. Like, even their goal was from range. But you can see they didn't actually create a great deal because they just kept shooting from range. Uh, we took the lead very early on through Curtis Jones, who again is having a great season. Uh, we then made it 2-0 through Sam Hughes, which was very, very nice. Valentin Barbero got on back for them. And then they just kept punting long shots at us for the rest of the match. But a great win away at St. Mary's. And I thought at that point, brilliant. Great win against Blackburn, expected, but amazingly good win away at Southampton. We were right up there. I think this actually sent us top of the league again. But unfortunately, we then got brought crashing down with a 3-0 defeat away at Huddersfield. Um, no surprises, because Robbie Burton got booked two time, uh, twice in three minutes and was sent off after 24 minutes. We were actually on top of that. Most, I think seven of these shots came before the red card. We were dominating Huddersfield, but unfortunately after that, there was just no hope for us. Petrak scored, and then two goals for Ray Minaj. His sister, Nikki, will be very, very pleased, but unfortunately, I'm not. And 3-0 defeat, and that just decimated the confidence. As we then went into a game away at West Bromwich Albion, this was a weird one. Jan Valerie was sent through in the first minute and scored. Uh, he ran from his own half all the way through and just scored. Very frustrating, but luckily Curtis Jones equalised for us. He then put us in front from this penalty spot after 27 minutes, and I thought, right, we're back in this, we're in front, everything is looking good. Unfortunately, uh, Jan Valerie then immediately equalised for them, but we were still in the ascendancy, it would be fair to say, uh, having a good old game. Uh, why does it... That's weird. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then unfortunately... Yeah, Gabriel Martinelli scored a brilliant goal and put West Brom in front. And I thought, oh, for goodness sake. But then we won a penalty in the 93rd minute uh, and they were down to 10 men as a result of it too. But then you never scored the second penalty. I don't think I've, on FM20, I don't think I've had a player score more than one penalty in the game. If you get a second penalty, it's always missed. That seems to be my experience with it so far. But I still think we should have done better given that we created seven clear-cut chances in this match and somehow didn't manage to get a point out of it. Um, annoying. 
But more annoying by the fact that we're now down to fourth in the league as a result of back-to-back -back defeats. If we'd won both of those, we'd be joint top with Reading and right in there. And QPR are now right in the battle as well, having won at least five in a row. Leeds are drifting away a little bit. We're still 10 points clear of dropping out the playoffs. The, dr the playoffs are pretty much in the bag unless there's some really weird stuff happens. But I do wonder, like that top... Top two spots are going to be very, very difficult to fight for. We need to go on a good run. And we're just not getting the consistency at the moment. We're not able to string three or four wins together. And that's what we really need to do. And that's what the other teams at the top, just above us, are actually doing right now. Still, 10 assists in the league, though, for Regan Booty at the halfway stage is very, very nice indeed. Regan Booty still average ratings, still top there. Very, very nice. But Justin Giraldo of Birmingham City has got 15 goals already. Um... Crazy stuff, but we, we need to be better. And today at home to Fulham is a chance for us to do that because a win would send us above them, and that's really important. It's going to be difficult, though, as we then play Forest at home after that. That has to be a victory. But I'm very concerned that the two straight defeats are going to decimate our confidence. So we need to be big today against Fulham. Unfortunately, Akinola's out with a twisted ankle. Nico Williams is out with whatever he's chose to be out with this week. Uh, frustrating times. We also notice Patrick Roberts is now playing for Fulham again. Weird how the world turns. But we shouldn't require too many changes. Um, Wait, can he play? How is he able to play with a pulled groin? Okay, maybe we can start him. He'll get injured after two minutes anyway, but I'd rather do that than... I just think he's better than Fjortov. Burton can come back in now. He was out for suspension in the last game, which did not help us at all. Uh, I've started troughing up top because you'll see here... Where is it? Uh, the Campbell. He really has started drifting off. It's no longer even about consistency. He's just drifting off, whereas Kostel Troughan is a consistent climber, and I feel like that, that crossover point is coming. So on the bench, Lennon, uh, Lervik, Gubrinich, Campbell, Fleming, McPhee, and Oz. Um, I've, ch I've, someone made a good point that Fleming is good for the creative stuff and he's probably better against weaker opponents. So I'm going to start Walker for the really big games. And if we can do, for example, against Forrest, I might start Brandon Fleming for that one because he's done all right when he's played. So that's the lineup that we're going to go with for today. Uh, we'll obviously have Lurvik around because I just want to see if Williams can get through a game because he's just genuinely great when he plays. I just really want us to put in a big performance. Like we've got Forrest up next, which is going to be great. But if we can go into that game, having just beaten Fulham and moved back into the promotion places, then brilliant. Caballero. And Hermerson, brilliant. Can he square it? Yes, he can. Wrong Coates. I think Coates is now our top scorer as well, I think. Uh, oh, can he square it? He's got to. Please, Coates. He, no! Oh, my God. Please square the freaking football, you mug. I'm... If this new update of FM, which I hope will come out relatively soon, because there's generally speaking one around this time of year, doesn't have that shit fixed, I'll be furious because it's so easy, surely. that Strikers do take those angles sometimes. Sure, fine, whatever. But it's happened so frequently. Great save in the end, but bloody hell. Uh, that had to be 1-0. Clear the way for Booty. Go on, lad. Please find Trofan. He does. That's a great ball. Costal Trofan. He's not really been great lately, but he's... Oh, my God. What a great save that is from the Fulham keeper. We have to be in front. And Fulham haven't hit the target in 27 minutes, which is an, a, a positive... Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, good save by McGee. Stepped up when he needed to there. How is that not a shot? There we go. Right, thank you. Booty again. Driving away. So it's around the side for Trofan. It's a tough angle for him. And it's a great save again for Marek Rodak. And another big chance for us there. Tough angle, though. But now we've got a chance again with Williams. Burton. Around the side for Ron Coates. Bit of space for him for once. Can he slip it through for someone? Finds Booty. Booty's all the way through. Oh, Jesus. Better news is the fact that Reading were losing 1-0 at home to West Bromwich Albion, which would be great if we could actually do what we need to do here. Because we're doing great, except Marek Rodak's having a blinder. Like, everything's going to plan. In terms of creating the opportunities, we look good defensively. We look great going forward. We just can't finish. Like, we're getting really good chances today. They're in great positions. Block, right, let's get going. Hermerson, Ron Coates with room to run. That's the worst thing for any opponent team to see. Ron Coates, he's got Costal Troffin. He has to find him. Like, he had about three opportunities to square that ball for an open goal for Costel Troffin, and he just didn't do it. Cleared. Burton. Coates over the crossbar. Haven't been as good in the second half, but I mean, maybe I'm too harsh on Ron Coates there. Maybe he was doing his best, but I feel like there was a chance for him to just... Doesn't have to cross it, just square it with a nice little pass. Simple stuff, really. Mc, dropkick McPhee. Booty. Just put one in behind for someone. There we go. Ron Coates is still on the pitch, even though he's injured here. Finds Robbie Burton. Oh, cleared. Not done yet, though. Brandon Fleming. Good opportunity for him now. Hermanson. Ah. Hughes again. Nico Williams, who actually has made it through a full 90 minutes here, it would seem. And now he's found Oz. Oz is in behind. Can a mama Oz? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't know anymore. Watch them score this, probably. Nope. Liao. Bye. I'm off. I've had enough. I'm off. Got to add a little walk. Calm down for a bit. Got myself a chocolate bar because, you know... You're not good when you're angry, as they say. Feels like we've had a lot of games like this lately. Huddersfield won. 
fair enough. But, ah, oh, Jesus. Against West Brom, it was just like chance after chance after chance. And, oh, dear. The pressure's on now, lads. Um, let's see if they miss. They'll score. That's why he steps up and scores a fucking penalty. I have no words for it. We missed every... We had tons of chances today. There was no excuse for not at least scoring one of them. And then to go and concede a 90th minute penalty is just classic, isn't it? Um, these are the sort of things that cost you promotion at the end of the day. And I can't blame anyone like Luke McGee for once. It's simply down to the strikers and players not scoring. Hopefully Forrest will be better because that's now three consecutive defeats. Um, and we played really well for the most part in that game. And nine times out of ten, that's not only a... That's just a win. But hey, that's life. Let's move on. So I've had to hold a team meeting. That's how bad things have got. Uh, they have now pinged up in the right direction, which is exactly what we need right now going into this game. Fulham did win away at Reading and now are gone top of the league. So there's that. Other results, QPR losing to West Brom. So that kind of helps in some ways, but Leeds also won. So looking at how the league's shaping up now, uh, a win for us today would see us go on to 48 points and probably go back up into third place, which would actually be fairly solid and we'd still be right in the battle, which is the main thing. But the fact is the gap now to dropping out the playoffs is only five points. It was as much as 12 at one point. And we really need to get something sorted because uh, lately it's just been crap after crap and the amount of chances we've had over the past few matches and not taken them is is utterly insane uh, just genuinely but we need to move on unfortunately uh the games came very thick and fast weirdly uh, i don't know why nico williams is so unfit but i think it's probably because he's still nursing that slight knock so fjordov will have to come in uh it appears that ron coates also is a bit worse so Nicky, uh, ricky griffiths will have to play also good news as well is that our uh, israeli left back will be joining us in a couple of days so maybe we'll have another option there with a slight more rounded approach because you can see that left back spot and goalkeeper are the two weaknesses. Now, goalkeeper, in terms of the rating, that's irrelevant because no goalkeeper gets a good rating. But you can see how much lower that is. Also, strikers. But unfortunately, as much as Campbell has had decent ratings, his performances recently have been appalling. But maybe today is a chance to give him a little option to see if he can come back into form against Nottingham Forest. Maybe. Because he does seem to be on the way down, as you can see with his star rating now at three. I'm also going to start Brandon Fleming for this one uh, because he has performed better overall. Like, and our form is 14th lately, and I don't, I'm not surprised at all. But then again, every season has a wobble. Hopefully this is ours and we can pull ourselves out of it soon. But if we lose again here, ugh, that would start to concern me quite dramatically uh, because I wouldn't really have any explanation as to why we've suddenly started losing. Obviously, we lost the Huddersfield game because we were down to 10 men for large portions of it. But it does seem that losing it just seemed completely to just destroy the confidence in the team. Well, so far, nothing has happened at all. And Booty has finally had a shot there after 16 minutes. We don't look particularly confident right now. We're not playing the ball around. Like, we were great against Fulham for the most part. Just couldn't find the net. Today, we're not even finding the opportunities, which is a problem. Just score a scrappy goal. Get an annoying lead or something. Anything. One good omen is the fact that Ricky Griffiths is starting and he scored both goals against them earlier this season. So maybe there is hope for us yet. I'm not really pressing as much as I'd like, considering how much the tactic suggests we should be. Oh, good ball. Booty does brilliantly. Just picks it up. Griffiths, he's got to take on the man. He's through again. Ricky Griffiths! Uh, yes, he's done it again! Ricky Griffiths scores his third goal of the season against Nottingham Forest. D I mean, I know he has got one other, but what is this man? Regan Booty as well with his 11th assist of the season. They just He just drives past that defender, but this is an extremely good finish. Like, a really good finish in the bottom corner. But yeah, we couldn't finish to save our lives against Fulham. Brilliant moment. Well played. And I'd say we've deserved that. Booty's ball, and again, surely there's not more. And it's another goal! It's Dara O'Shea, and it's 2-0. We're 2-0 up against Forest. Thank God for that is all I can say. Rigan Booty, by the way, pair of assists, up to 12 for the season. I think that matches what he did last year, and he's done it at the halfway point this year. What a lad. Brilliant ball in. Dara O'Shea. I mean, he's playing to fill in for Akinola, but that's his second of the season. Fair play. And like I said, sometimes you just need a few scrappy... Admittedly, the first goal from Griffiths was great, but you need a scrappy goal from a set piece just to set yourselves away, and we're winning. Oh, thank God. We go back into third as things stand, and things will look, be looking much, much brighter for us, and we'll still be right in touch. But we cannot afford to let this slip. What would be really nice, though, if we, if we were to go on and just beat them like 4-0 or something. But I'd happily settle for... Hey, I'd settle for 2-1 at this point, to be honest. Oh, but wow, Booty's just got a touch on that. Campbell's in, and he's missed. He's not had a lot to feed on today, in fairness. It's weird to think that, actually, our wingers have been our best-scoring players this season, considering how poor they've been in recent years. But that's why I wanted to move over to Troffin, because I feel like if we could get him sorted out and scoring, then we'd be absolutely unplayable. He's played himself into trouble here. Oh, no, he hasn't. Booty! Oh, I want him to get a goal against Forrest. This hasn't exactly been some masterclass performance in terms of shots, but we've got a two-goal lead right now and doing what we need to do when we do it and Fleming with a good save. This has very, very much been a case of seeing it out. We've not been amazing. We've got a 2-0 lead. Burton? Booty? Surely not? Oh, that would have been perfect if he bends one in the top corner there. Defensively, though, really solid. Clean sheet so far. We've limited them to virtually nothing in the match, which is great. Fleming? Oh, great ball for Burton. Troffin's going to be able to find a run here and wow, McPhee is flying. Go on, Niall. Oh, what a great stop that is. 
really, really good save. And there we go. Notts County 2, Nottingham Forest nil. A much better performance, even possibly than the first game against them this season. And there we go. We've won it again. Booty man of the match sets up both the goals, plays a blinder, and we're, we've finally won a game. And now things look a little bit better. We're only three points off the two, top two spots right now. We finally got back to winning ways. Now eight points clear of dropping out the playoffs. But that run of games, I mean, say for example, we've taken seven points from those instead. We'd be currently sitting really nicely clear. Seven points from dropping out those automatics, but that's life. Now, I'd already decided before I did this one, we're going to do a double live come in the next episode. It's going to be Stoke, uh, sorry, Hull and Cardiff. Uh, just a couple of games because I've not got a lot of time. So we're going to have to do it because I've done some quite big chunks and double live comms in the last few episodes. Uh, it's been mostly, you know, we've had, from our last six matches, we've won three and lost three. Not ideal, and we need to get back to winning ways. We need to win away at Swansea. The problem is, it's on Monday. So we're going to have a really tired-ass team, which is a bit of a shame. But hopefully Nico Williams and Ron Coates can return for that one. And then we've also got Stoke in the FA Cup, which the board expect us to win, because reasons. So we're going to come back for Hull City and Cardiff. Um, yeah, oh, I just want to quickly show you the club vision. Very, very quickly. It's not really anything new. Uh, we've got a good player from the left side from Nottingham who's caught the eye. Excellent group of players coming through, though. Could still mean there's going to be something good in there, but nothing really stands out for me, unfortunately. So, there you go. Um, yeah, next episode is going to be the games uh, against, what did I say? I said Hull and Cardiff City. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, at least we won the derby after the frustration of the Fulham match, uh, then drop a like. That'd be glorious. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a double live com of goodness. As always, hold your gun, capybara, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.